The backboard is the true six man in a game of basketball. The backboard quietly denies shooting attempts from almost 10% of the court. Let's reimagine a game of basketball where the basket is 100% accessible from every spot on the court. Welcome to the Basketball to Remix podcast. I am Mark Armstrong, aka Coach 1891. The Basketball to Remix podcast is all about bringing innovation to the game of basketball. This idea is caught up in the term remix. We talk about the most important innovations in the history of the game, the impact of modern innovations, and what technologies on the horizon might impact the future of basketball. We guarantee to bring value to your time and innovation for your mind. The backboard in basketball has been a consistent presence in the game since 1904. For 125 years, the basketball backboard has directly influenced how offensive tactics and skills have evolved. This is episode three of a five-part series exploring the question, is the basketball backboard obsolete? So far, to make our case, we stress that the original game of basketball didn't have a backboard and that the backboard is one of three most significant innovations in the game of basketball. We also discuss how the innovation of the backboard had nothing to do with enhancing gameplay or assisting with making shots. (laughs) No, no, no. The backboard was introduced as a form of crowd control. So, looking at our question, is the basketball backboard obsolete? We first have to understand that the game wasn't intended to be played with the backboard in the first place. That unforeseen circumstances and the lack of flexibility and facilities at that time forced the innovation of the backboard. In many ways, the backboard is a silent sixth man, a sixth player, on both the offensive and defensive end that stands quietly almost in the shadows. Defensively, the backboard quietly defends 400 square feet of the 4,700 square foot space of a basketball court. The backboard defends shots attempts from 8.5% of the basketball court. What do I mean? So, the backboard extends four feet from the baseline If we extend that line of the backboard location from sideline to sideline, that's approximately 400 square feet in the half court set where the shooting line of sight of the basket is impaired. There's not a clean shot. When moving into the key area, the 64 square feet of prime dunk in your face real estate that doesn't have a direct line of sight to the basket. It is so difficult to make shots from these areas of the court that when the player does, the shot is normally followed by the oohs and the ahs of the spectators. On the highest level, these made shot attempts show up on highlights on a regular basis. So yes, we enjoy seeing the occasional made jump shot from the corner that loops over the backboard and drops into the net. Or even amazing reverse layups and reverse dunks like Dr. J or Kobe Bryant that forever are memorialized in video highlights. But do these few thrills outweigh the liberty given given by providing 100% access to the hoop by removing the backboard? Think about it. Offensively, the backboard has served as training wheels for decades, helping young players build confidence in their shot, helping players who haven't perfected their shooting form or developed touch to still see the ball go through the basket. Several decades ago, it was uncommon to see, it was not uncommon to see 20 foot bank shots made on a regular basis. In the age of the three point shot, the bank shot is not as popular and the mid range game is becoming extinct in favor for layups, free throws and three point shots. The backboard's final leg and its high usage rate is for layups. But we'll save that conversation for backboard and layups for another day. Today, let's wrap up discussing the backboard as an offensive sixth man. 
Growing up in my neighborhood, we had a community center, and at this community center, we had a pool table. And the way we played pool was any time that you hit the ball, hit a ball with the cue ball, and ricochets off another ball and goes in the pocket, for that shot to count, you had to tell your opponent you were going to do exactly that, ricochet off another ball, before you shot your shot. The same concept is applied to the way we play horse. You had to call bank before you shot a bank shot to let everyone know you were applying skill to the shot. And here's the rub in basketball. Outside of layups, a baller wants to know that you intended to use the backboard when you shoot. Now, I don't exactly know why this attitude has developed over the years, but I have, I have my thoughts. I think this attitude of calling bank when you shoot a bank shot comes from ballers witnessing and more importantly, losing games on lucky shots. What's, what's a lucky make? When a player shoots a shot that would have been missed, but the backboard bailed him out. The most classic example of this happened five years ago with Chris Paul, uh, which is called the Chris Paul I Called Game Shot. Here's how Zach Brook of NBA Sports describes the event. Uh, one of the most iconic moments in recent memory of the DC sports happened just a few years ago, five years ago in fact. In game three with the series tied 1-1, the Wizards were undermanned without John Wall in the lineup heading into the first game at home. The Wizard gave up a 21, 21 point lead and with just 14 seconds left, the game was tied. With little over six seconds remaining in regulation, Paul Pierce found himself with the ball with his back to Dennis Schroeder, squaring up with the rim, above the elbow of the key and just inside the three point arc, Chris Paul prepared for taking the shot with just 1.3 seconds remaining on the game clock. Pierce fires up the shot, and as he released the ball, Pierce fell onto his back as the ball went off the glass and into the cylinder. After the game, the then ESPN NBA reporter Chris Brouchard asked Pierce during the post-game interview, interview with the Hall of Famer called Bank. Pierce responded, nah, I called game. And again, here's the rub. The spot that Pierce shot from, that was his spot. The spot that he expects to make clean, all net shots all day, every day. And though Pierce called, I got game, was, his, was a Hall of Fame response. Everyone, including Pierce, knows that the offensive six man, the backboard, bailed him out and change the outcome of that game. The backboard quiet influence on the game is often overlooked. The backboard both challenges the skills of players to score despite its presence as well as bails players out in moments where their skills fail them. Thank you for joining the Basketball to Remix podcast where we promote the innovation of the game of basketball. I hope I brought value to your time and innovation to your mind. This is Coach 1891. Be blessed, and I'll see you at the top.